Hey everybody, it's Emily at Arg Schooling, and I'm going to be doing a family reading crate unboxing today. So I'm coming to you from my book crate fort. And I'm going to show you what's in this month's box. This month's theme was woof woof, yeah, bark bark, so it's a dog box. I'm just going to open this box and show you what is in here this month. So every month you get a booklet and this has discussion questions and activity ideas and rabbit trail ideas and ways to get more out of the theme. It also includes a, a link to our site where you can find more book recommendations, printable activities, and websites, and all sorts of fun stuff that you can use to, again, expand on the theme from this month's box. You also get three bookmarks, and my son, again, is the artist who designed these, so, and I don't think I can get close enough to show you, so this is one side. And then this is the other side. And then we have a, a bookmark with a mother reading to her child and a little quote. The fun item this month for the dog crate are little dog finger puppets. You get three. You get these little dog finger puppets and they're super cute. My kids have already confiscated a whole bunch of them. And now Let's talk about the books. So for the picture book, we have From Wolf to Wolf, The Story of Dogs by Hudson Talbot. If you bought the bird crate from February, you'll recognize the author. He was also the one that did the United Tweets of America book. This book is adorable. It is now my nine-year-old's favorite book. And this is beautifully illustrated story of how dogs first befriended, or how wolves first befriended men, and so the first pet dogs, and how they evolved. It sort of starts with a bit of a mythology type story, and it shows how we have turned wolves into the common house pet dogs that we have today, and it's really cute. I really love this book. It's great. For the middle grade family read aloud, I chose Maxie's Secret, or What You Can Learn from a Dog by Lynn Plord. I loved this book. I was initially drawn to it because the cover is so darn cute. But this is a really sweet book. It's about a boy who moves to a new town and has to adjust to that. He's really short and he feels sort of like he doesn't fit in. And he's not, his father is the new principal at the school, so he's embarrassed that, like, Everyone's going to know him by that, and that he's short. And so his parents decide to help him adjust by getting him a pet dog. So he chooses this puppy, and they discover that the puppy is deaf. So he has to learn how to take care of a dog who can't hear. And then he meets his new neighbor, and she is blind. And so he's got a blind friend and a deaf dog, and it's just, it's really an interesting take on the typical boy and his dog story, and I adored it. It was so sweet. It was such a lovely story, and I love how each chapter has a secret, and it, there are things like lessons that he's learning from his new friends, from his dog, how to make friends, how to be a friend. It's just a really sweet story, and I loved it. The young adult older reader book I chose Paper Wishes by Lois Sepabin, I think I'm saying that right, and this book was wonderful. This might be one of my favorite reads from the last month or so. This is a story about a girl and her family who are taken to the Japanese internment camps during World War II, and so she has a pet, or her, it's her grandfather's dog, Yujin, and they, it's a beloved pet to her. She loves her dog. He's a small dog, and when they're take, told to be at the station to go to the camps, they're taken by on a ferry and then on a train. So when they get on the ferry, she sneaks the dog into her coat, hoping that no one will notice. And of course, somebody notices, and they take her dog away. And so by the time she gets to the camps, she can no longer speak. And 
she's become mute and she can't talk and she's desperately wanting her dog to find his way to the camp. And so it's a story about being in an internment camp and what that was like, but it's also just about her desperate need for something to love. And it's really sad, but it's also really beautiful. And I just I love this book so much. It was so lovely to read. And the book I chose for you, the parent, is Lily and the Octopus by Stephen Rowley. I really don't know how to describe this book to you. It's very strange, but very beautiful. And it really reminded me a lot of Life of Pi, where by the time I finished the book, I did not know what to do with myself for a little while. I just had to sit and think about it. This book is about grief. And it's about how to come to terms with knowing that someone you love is going to die. And how do you deal with that? And it's, ugh, it's so just beautiful to read. It's weird. There's, it's, it's a magical realism sort of story where the dog can talk. At least you think the dog can talk. And I always wondered the whole time I was reading, like, is the dog really talking or is he imagining that the dog is talking? I don't know. The way it's written, it almost feels like the dog can talk. And so, I don't know, I found that part, like, I wasn't sure how to think of that. But o overall, though, this story is just, it's beautiful and sad, and I cried. So if a book can make me cry, then it's a good book. <laughs> so I hope you guys love this, too. I can't wait to hear what people think about it. So those are the books that I have chosen this month for the dog crate. I'm excited for everyone to get theirs. If you want one, we still have lots available. I'll have all the information in the description box for how to get your crate and any other questions you might have about the crates. You can go to that link and check that out. Or you can ask me questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer you. I'll see you guys next month for the June box. And the theme for that box is going to be diversity, hashtag own voices. So I'm really excited for that one. I have some great books. It's going to be epic. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Happy reading. Bye.